if birds are gathering, there is something going on, it must be a whale stranding. If they see a whale and the day uh, following they would have a storm, they say, oh, that was because we've seen a whale, that monster caused the storm. The public's attitude is shifting, uh, is getting more and more uh, friendly, let's say. Uh, people like whales. Whale watching at the coastline of Madeira in Portugal. We hope to catch a marine mammal like a whale or a dolphin on camera. 100 years ago, they wanted to catch the whales for their blubber, nearly wiping out all the whales from the seas. Already as early as the Stone Age, people were fascinated by whales. We know if you look at really far back into the Stone Age, they made depictions of, uh, of whales in their rock engra engravings with beautiful whale pictures. They had some ideas of that whales are important. Even during the age of the Vikings, whaling was important. If you go into the Witch and Viking Age, we know they were whaling. We, we know they hunted them. We know they also, in some parts of Norway, they hunted large whales, but in generally they hunted for the small whales. We know that there, at certain localities they came back year after year and they collected whales. They for sure used the blubber, of course, uh, because that was made for oil. They used the bo bones, which also was producing oil, and they used the meat. From the medieval period to early modern times, hunting for whales escalated. On the one hand, people were scared of the whales. On the other hand, they were depending on them as a resource. They had the dual meaning for people back then. So people were considered them as monsters. So they were thinking them as a, a biblical, the biblical Leviathan, something that was scary, something that could be a sign of a bad thing happening in the ocean or in, during a journey. But at the same time, they were, whales were a resource, a very valuable one. And so people like to have them nearby so they can use them. So using strandings when a whale comes ashore or actively hunting whales would come out in an in a amount of resources that were very valuable to people, including meat, oil, baleen, teeth, all those kinds of products that could be obtained from whales. At the beginning of the 20th century, whales were depleted and the continuous hunting nearly wiped out several whale species. But they didn't know how bad the situation was. At the beginning of the 20th century, the sea was thought to be uh, infinite, so the resources were there to be used. They have the idea that they depleted the stocks in certain areas, so they know that they have just wiped out all the whales that were around and they need to move. But that sometimes happen also with fisheries, so there's something that fishermen are used, so using the resources in one area, moving to the other, and then coming back. But when we are talking about fish, so we are talking about a species that has a reproductive cycle, which is very short, the stocks can rebuild, and not the whales. So the whales, they were being so heavily hunted that it was, they weren't having enough time to build their stocks again. Today we have a new situation. I think that the public's attitude is shifting, uh, is getting more and more uh, friendly. A study based on a questionnaire spread on social media like Facebook and Twitter tells us how people perceive whales today. People just uh, want to know more about whales, about dolphins, they want to learn about their biology. Uh, for them it's clear that uh, they are very important for the functioning of the marine ecosystems and also they are against captivity, which is also a very important result of our study, showing that people at the majority, 78% of the respondents, were against uh, captivity. People like whales. And more and more, I think if this study will happen again after 10 years, the results are going to be even better. This film reflects only a small part of the outcome from this workshop. 
Here scientists from different disciplines gather to share knowledge about marine mammals. I do think that history can contribute to what is uh, nowadays the conservation of these animals and to try to implement some measures of conservation and ways of acting towards the animals in the future. So when people compare what we know today or what we see and perceive today with what we perceived in the past, I think we'll see big differences and I think that we can show uh, politicians and uh, different stakeholders the way to go in the future trying to maintain these animals in the ecosystems. Oh,